You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, goddammit! Get the point. Good. And now... Bend over. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Hell's bells, holy crap and wackadoodle. Hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody. This is Grammy Mary, and I finally made it on the radio. Oh, I'm in my rocket chair. I'm cruising around. I have no freaking clue where I'm going because, yeah, lost my roadmap to the stars, so speak. Been on the phone. <laughs> with my eldest and uh, yeah <sighs> it'll be okay it'll be okay everything's kosher everything's cool that's that's what I'm sending out to the universe so hey there hi there happy wackadoodle Wednesday it is a whacked kind of day it has been a whacked kind of day so let me see who all's over here on uh, Twitterville. Twitterville. I see that I gained another stalker. Yay! I think it was my niece. <laughs> Bless her heart. She's she's dealing with some issues right now, and yeah, hopefully she's doing a whole heck of a lot better. Auntie or uncle, as as the older nieces and nephews call me, I'm Uncle Mary because I had a nephew first. And I convince them all that when I have a nephew first, that makes me an uncle. If I would have had a niece first, I would have been an aunt. <laughs> yeah, I messed with my children and my siblings' children as well. But, um, yeah, I had to send her some oils. And I hope they are helping. I also sent some oils to her mommy, and I hope they are helping. And now I'm going to have to do up another batch of oils, but... I know they will help because I'm sending that vibe out to the universe. That vibe needs to work. Dang it. So, um, over here on Twitter, yeah, 375 stalkers. Thank you, Barman, for tweeting me out. I really do appreciate it. And hey, Katie. Howdy do. Or Kate. Let me see. Kate, and that's a weird-ass picture. Oh, Kate, my niece. Caterbug. <laughs> what a crazy woman. Okay, sweet. It's my niece that's following me. Now I got a couple of nieces following me. That is truly scary. Their parents are going to say, you're not allowed to hang out with her. <laughs> of course, their parents, their mommies or daddies know that, um, yeah, they grew up with me, so they know me all too well. Okay, I did not get logged into Crush and Run. So, hey, anybody over on Crush and Run that's listening in? Been a day. Over here on Mines. Hi there, everybody over here on Mines. I don't know if any of you are listening in or not. And, hey, you know, it's okay. But I'm sa giving you a shout-out because I really do like this website. And I found some really interesting, very... Um, um, mm, mess with the mind, cause some cognitive dissonance kind of crap going on. So I've been doing an awful lot of, of, um, wow, shit. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of that the last few days, just from some of the things I've been reading and researching. It's like, oh, <laughs> I don't know that I want my mind to be that blown. Damn it all. Okay. But hi, everybody. Um, over here on this effing site, thank you, Grimner, for sharing me. I truly do appreciate it. And thank you for putting up with me. Good God. Man, you guys, this I, I am the most wackadoodly host out there. <laughs> Hell's bells. <Oy. laughs> Let's see. Who else is over here? I see Gary L. was sharing some stuff earlier. And yes, I see that attention, the giant lizard attack. Godzilla. Godzilla. I also see Katie Troxell was over here sharing some potent and pertinent information, as well as Bob Renner and the lovely Mary B and Cowboy Tech. So hi, all you guys over here on this effing side. How are you doing this evening? Um, let's see. What else? I'm. I seriously. I am. I'm kind of brain fried right now. So you guys are just gonna have to deal with me. 
Um, I did say hey on fake book, didn't I? Let's see. I finally figured out the reason why I look so bad in pictures. It's my face. Raymond, that's not true. <laughs> you goofball. Oh, and by the way, happy birthday, Java Doctor. I see that over here on Fakey Book. Happy, happy birthday to you. Um, CNN, canned bullshit. Yes, it is. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, <sighs> okay, over here in the RLM, which is where you need to be if you want to give me static, because pretty much, yeah. This is where I pay attention. I, I really seriously tried one time on Spreaker, and it just, if you think I'm whacked now, <laughs> make me pay attention to multiple boards at the same time. It's just not pretty. Okay, um, so over here in the RLM is Barman right up top, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. I also see Grimner, the RLM god, is here. Hey, Grimmy, how you doing, hon? Once again, thank you. The lovely Moose Girl is here. Hey, Moosey, how did your son do? Or how did your son's hockey team do? I didn't really, yeah, this weekend, I wasn't really online. I mean, I showed I was online, but I wasn't really online. Sorry, I'm trying to untangle myself, and I think I just made it worse. I did. <laughs> I don't have a long enough leash, and so therefore, I get myself all twisted. Go figure. Oh, well. <laughs> Okay, where was I at? Kate! Hi, Kate. How's things down in Florida? Do you guys have more temperate weather now, as in for re your region? Because, wow, I saw it down in Texas. It's colder than Hobbsy hell. Um, Asmodeus Asmo is here. Hey, Asmo. How you doing? And the lovely Beth Z, closely followed by BTC Bob. Don't look back. Don't look back. Don't, don't, don't let them know that you know they're following you, Beth. Just don't. Don't do it. Don't. Okay, I also see Chalcedonies in the chat, as well as a double dip in a Chloe. Chloe, Chloe, got an echo. Yoo-hoo. I'm here, kind of, sort of, well, physically. Um, let's see. They won? Sweet. That's awesome, Moosey. Okay. Um, IB Don C is here. Hey, Don. How you doing? Sorry to hear about your water issues with the burr, 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 cold. Oh, Crush and Run is running a bit slim today. Ah, okay. Thanks, Grim. Um, let's see. Java, 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 Java Doctor 2. The birthday boy is here. Um, oh, and Don is printing parts. So, how, Don, you know, just let me know whenever you get a chance. Let me know how you're really liking it because it looks like you're really, really, really enjoying that um, 3D printer. Heater and sweaters, Kate? Oh, my goodness. Wow. That's unusual for Florida. But, eh, it's been an unusual year. But, you know, it is global warming, after all. Um, Let's see. Don, Java, JJ's. Hey, JJ's. How you doing? Hope you're doing absolutely splendiferous. And I also see Juana Taco. You know what? Juana Taco, that really sounds very, very yummy. But I made a batch of soup the other night, and I still got enough for supper tonight. And oh my God, is it ever yummy. Mm. Got just enough for tonight. And some whole wheat dinner rolls to go with it, and some real butter. I'm going to be fat and sassy when I get done on the radio tonight. But for now, I'm just going to be wackadoodly. I also see Meister Bar Party, Woody. How you doing? And P. Bunyan is here. Tim. Burr. Hey, P. Bunyan. Long time no chitty chat. I also see RLM Fluke, the Vanna White of the RLM channel. Rob Works is here, and thank you for firing up that bubbler, hun. Oh, wow, you have no idea how much I need that. I also see Trust No One is here. Trusty dude, what's going on with the Bitcoin? I keep seeing all this weirdness. What's up? Are, are they dodging cybernetically with the cybernetic currency or what? I also see Dakota is here up in the great white north. I know, no, that's not a racist thing. It's snow 
for those of you. Why is it all of a sudden that the color white, which yes, it is a color, but it's a combination of all colors, just in the lighter side of the spectrum, just like black is a combination of all the colors in the darker side of the spectrum. You got your shadow, you got your light. You got your shading, which gives you depth, and you got your light, which makes you feel airy, light and airy. And yet everybody goes, we're better. Now you frickin' sneeches on the beaches. Frumpy! Hi, Frumpy. How are you? I hope you're having an awesome day. I also see Gooberzilla is here. Goober, honey, did you go and attack Tokyo? Gooberzilla. I also see Kozu is here. Hey, Kozu. Oh, Bitcoin. Well, you know, it still looks respectable. You know, I I don't pay that close of attention, but it looks like it's more than what it was. Um, Kozu is in the house as well as Meisterbrower too. Well, we got a double dip of Meisterbrower. Damn it. That's like a double dip of party. <laughs> Poxified is logged in but marked away. And I also see Slim Jim Flim. Hi, Slim Jim. How are you doing, sweetie? I hope you're having an absolutely awesome day and I hope things are warming up for you. This, it really has been a rather frigid winter so far. Granted, it only started in the end of December, but it's been frigid. Mother Nature's going through a cold spell, apparently. I also see Teddy, the cuddly one. See, everybody needs a Teddy to cuddle with, and then that way you won't have to deal with the frigidness, you think? And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the Phantom, who did my wonderful intro. Thank you ever so much, Phantom, for that intro. Mm -mm. I just got delivered a cup of coffee by a very sweet, sweet individual. Hey, Mary B. Mary B. Yay, the lovely lady from Down Under has made it over to the Chitty Chat. Yay, B. I'm going to have to say yay, B. Okay. And I think since everybody else has been checking the weather, I'm going to check mine too. Because, yeah, it's been cold. It's supposed to be warm tomorrow, though, and even warmer still the next day. That is, if the weatherman ain't lying to me. It would be nice if the weatherman ain't lying to me. Come on. Does it take that long, really, fluky barman, to figure out what my weather is? I have no weather. I have no weather. Darn. Okay. Um, let me see. I've been throwing stuff in my pocket. I've been, oh, wow. <laughs> Gary L. just shared something over on uh, Twitter from Board Panda. And damn. Wow, that's frosty. That's frosty. I'm going to have to click on that one just to see. It's uh, from BoardPanda.com. A thermometer just broke at 62, minus 62 degrees Celsius, minus 80 Fahrenheit, and it's in the world's coldest village, and the photos are breathtaking, which, wow, I can't wait to see those. Welcome to Oymyakon. <laughs> Oy. <laughs> It's a village where students are expected to attend class till temperatures reach minus 52 Celsius or minus 62 Fahrenheit. The remote Siberian village is considered to be the coldest permanently inhabited settlement in the world, and it has just plummeted into the minus 62 Celsius range. Day yum. It's my, uh, making our daily complaints about the weather sound really silly. Yes, I'm going to stop bitching now. I'll still whine and whimper a little bit, but I won't bitch so much because <laughs> I'm not there. We already introduced you to this place when photographer Amos Chapel traveled there to brave the freeze. He was wearing thin trousers when he first stepped outside at minus 47 Celsius, Chapel said. And I remember feeling like the cold was physically gripping my legs. The other surprise was that occasionally my saliva would freeze into needles that would prick my lips. That does not surprise me one damn bit. 
This time, however, the cold is even stronger, not only gripping legs, but turning people's eyelashes into icicles as well, which that's the reason why I clicked on it, because holy mackinoli, that is freaking cold. People, we ain't got nothing to bitch about when it comes to cold, okay? Just letting you know, damn, that is burzy, burzy, burzy. Go piss off. Who's going to go piss off? Okay, never mind. I'm going to back to this. So, uh, let's see. The official weather station at the Pole of Cold registered 15, minus 59 Celsius, but the new electronic th uh, thermometer claimed the weather was minus 62 Celsius. In fact, it even stopped working after reaching the painful mark. Some of the 500 locals go beyond that, claiming that the temperatures are as low as six, minus 68 Celsius. Ugh. In the 1920s and 30s, I'm not going to butcher that town, oy, was a stopover for reindeer herders who would water their flocks from the thermal spring. In attempts to force its nomadic population into putting down roots, the Soviet government later transformed the site into a permanent settlement. In 1933, a temperature of minus 67.7 Celsius was recorded in the village, and that is accepted as the lowest ever in the northern hemisphere, which holy shite. But I tell you what, those pictures are, wow, most definitely breathtaking. And it's not surprising then to think that, yeah, the woolly mammoths froze solid. I And here's a video of cars driving, and it's like, really? Seriously? How in the hell did you get the damn thing to start? Jeez, oh, Pete, that is flippin' cold. Damn. Oy. Okay, I got to share this one. That's thank you, Gary L. But oh, wow, okay, it's enough to make me go. I stop whining now. Thank you, Mother Nature, for only getting to minus four degrees the other day. Mm -mm. Wow. Okay, share that over here on Mines and over on the effing site. Just because it's effing gold there. Crap. Okay, and then I got to go and get to my my pocket because some of the stuff that I've been researching, I've been researching some of the crap that they're doing with cancer treatments, and um, you know they call them cancer treatments. Sure, they're treating you. Yeah. Well. Mm-hmm. Hey, what are they treating you for? That's what I want to know. Um, let's see. Where do I want to go first? Um, well, I've been reading about antioplastons, which are something that, you know, the, um, the federal government, after the doctor that found them, or, you know, actually, he didn't, dis okay, he found out that a certain combination of them have been working to help people with, like, brain tumors and a few other specific, because he's trying to fit within this certain criteria because the FDA is making him stay in this one criteria. And unless he comes up with like $2.5 million, he can't step up to the next phase of testing. So they're making him not be able to um, help others. You know, if you wish to be able to help or be helped by him, you have to travel to Texas because he can't interstate commerce laws and all this other fun shit. They're, they're diabolical bastards. But, you know, they're trying to stop him from doing this. And they've filed all kinds of charges. And indictment after indictment after indictment after indictment have all been kicked out. And while they were going through all that process of trying to indict him for fraud, even though the information that what he was doing was actually helping people, that was irrelevant to the charge, according to them. So, you know, how how is curing people irrelevant to your charging him with fraud for saying that he has a treatment that will help them? He doesn't say that he can cure them. He says, I have a treatment that may help you. And, yeah, so they tried to get him as a fraud multiple times. 
over like a 15, 17 year time span. And they're still fucking with him. Excuse me. First F-bomb of the night. It's been a day. Okay. And I need another sip of coffee. But the, um, what he is dealing with is, um, antineoplastons, which, um, basically are, uh, components in everybody's body that, uh, can be found in the urine because they are dispelled by the body, but they are, they are different chemical compounds and compo components and amino acids and all that other fun stuff, that, uh, peptides that, um, everybody has. It's just some have more than others. And those that have a lower level of the anti-neoplastons are the, usually the ones that have cancer diagnosis. And so if you up those in their system, their system will start fighting the cancer on its own. So it's basically your body will cure, your body will fix itself if you have the proper fuel in there, if you have the proper tools. And well, you know, the FDA and and the National Institute of Cancer Research and and Big Pharma don't want that out there because they don't want you cured. You cannot make money off people that are cured. You cannot have repeat customers if you don't give them chemo, which says in its little um, product brochure thingy that one of, one of the adverse side effects is that it will cause cancer. Chemotherapy is carcinogenic. Huh. And yet they're using it to treat cancer. Chemotherapy does not target cancer cells. Chemotherapy targets the body, the whole body, and nothing but the whole body, the whole immune system, and douches it. So, anybody out there listening, please don't go that route. Please don't. There are alternatives. There are holistic hospitals around now, and they're becoming more and more. So, please don't go the chemo route or the radiation route nasty nasty stuff radiation causes cancer why do they put a lead apron over you when you go to the dentist and they want to do x-rays they put a lead apron over you because they don't want to expose the major organs in your body well besides your brain they don't want to expose them to that radiation even though it's a low level of radiation and technically it won't yada 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 blah 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 why are you putting the lead suit on me why do you step out of the room yeah don't give me that shit don't go that route, peeps. Don't do it, please. Okay. I'm going to have to get back to my pocket. I'm ranting. I'm ranting. Okay, this one I thought was rather, um, it's from the Daily Sheeple. Or is it from the Daily? It shows, yeah. It was posted on From the Trenches World Report, but it is from the Daily Sheeple. So, um, apparently a free speech demonstration was shut down to, due to lack of permission for free speech demonstration. So if you don't have the proper papers, if you don't have your documentation, if you didn't ask permission to <laughs> exercise your free speech, you have no free speech. It's like, excuse me? Free speech is just that. It's just that. That's another thing that they're they're trying to, you know, uh, actually part of the way that they have beaten the FDA and some of these other ones is they've been saying, you are violating his right to free speech. Everyone has the right to free speech. Why can't a doctor say that I have a treatment that may help you? You don't want him to say that. So, yeah, only in America. Yep, free speech demonstration was shut down because they didn't get permission for something that they had every right to do. And it's not something that's a right that's granted by governments because governments don't grant rights. And contrary to what a lot of people have been taught, you are, rights are not granted by the Constitution or the Bill of Rights. Those are stipulations of rights that are pre-existing, pre-constitution, pre-any kind of government. Those are pre-existing rights just by virtue of you being born. You have that right. So, this bullshit of, and it's a video, basically. So, um, yeah. 
someone tells you you don't have a right to exercise your free speech your right to free speech you just tell them excuse me that is not a constitutional right that 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 bill of rights there that's supposed to those are limitations on the government that that you know somehow or another things got twisted around you know and it's or maybe that's the way it was intended to be but we all need to look at it as excuse me excuse me but um i had that right before government was even a thought just because do they do they censor babies that as soon as they're born they're not allowed to cry anymore that's their freedom of expression they are expressing the holy shit what am i doing here when they cry i would <laughs> <laughs> it's like damn it it was nice and dark and warm and i got room service and now you're making me out here and i'm naked and cold Ooh. yeah i'd be crying too okay so uh let me put this one over here on uh mines and put it on effin as well looks like you guys are really chitty chatting a lot over there in the Let's see. I'll just do that. <sighs> so what's going on over here? You got the Borg agenda big time, but no spaceship. Oh, sweetie. You know what? And that was something else that I got to thinking about. Because everybody says, you know, when they talk about the, the dome over the earth or whatever, you know, when... I have been investigating and listening to some flat earth things and some debunker flat earth things and I'm still trying to trying to find my way and and figure out I know somebody's lying and until I get it all and you know I really don't give a shit what form it takes all I know is somebody's lying to my ass so um <clears throat> In any case, I don't think that there is like a solid dome or enclosure or anything like that. I think that's what that radiation, Van Allen radiation belt is. It will let things in, but it won't let us out. But it has to be something really, really big to let in. But we can't get out. Or, or maybe we could get out, but we would be fried little critters if we got out. So there, there would be ashes on the other side that would probably accumulate on the other side and then gradually just silt down. Global warming. <laughs> oh, well. Let me put this over here on the... Oh, shit. I'm not done with my burr. I'm not done with my burr one on the effing site. Damn it. Okay. Do I have a frozen dude on here? I don't know, and I'm not going to scroll and look for him. <laughs> I'm already feet bottled. Okay. Let's see here. Oh, the joys of doing live radio when you're not prepared for doodly squat. <laughs> Which is half the fun. You know, just winging it. I have tried to set myself a little oh you got to do this and you got to do that and we're going to cover this and we're going to cover that and you know I never stick to it I never do so I just quit doing it quit trying to be prepared okay um okay I share I saved this one too and I gotta I gotta share this it's just a meme um but it's a very appropriate meme yeah Oh, Meister Brower 2 pinged out. Damn it. Okay. I'll put this over here, too. Just because. Sharon. I ain't Sharon, Sharon. Okay, you gonna be that way? Fine. Um, Back to my pocket I go. So, you know, remember those um, UC Berkeley riots that they had? last year yeah you know the ones where where those antifa people were being ever so fascist you know the anti-fascist people were being ever so anti ever so fascist they don't see it because they don't look in a mirror well apparently there are this is according to the daily caller there are attendees 
that are suing Berkeley over injuries at the 2017 Yiannopoulos riot. Oh, Milo, no, they weren't coming to see how gorgeous you are, because I don't really think all that, he's all that cute. And not that that really makes a difference to him anyway, because his gait swings the other way, but still. Apparently, University of California, Berkeley, is facing a lawsuit from four residents who were injured attending a Milo Yiannopoulos event, which quickly devolved into a riot due to a lack of popo presence in February of 2017. John Jennings, Katrina, I'm not going to butcher your last name, and Trevor Hatch and Donald Fletcher, all residents of Berkeley, were attempting to attend the Yiannopoulos speaking event when uh, they were attacked by masked protesters. Berkeley's college newspaper reported this on Sunday. Uh, the February riots headlined national news for days and caused UC Berkeley $100,000 in damages. Which, yeah, see? See how being tolerant of untolerable behavior, see what it gets you? The complaint filed Thursday demands compensation for damages incurred due to university creating dangerous conditions and exposing the plaintiffs to physical harm caused by a violent mob of anarchists. Now, <clears throat> I understand that the word anarchist is not supposed to mean that, but obviously the definition has been um, hijacked and evolved. And so whether you want to, I mean, I don't care how many times you explain to someone what anarchy really means when you break down the word, the usage is going to go completely the opposite end of the spectrum. So these assholios, violent mob of assholios, that's what I'm going to call them. In this case, we had four innocent people who were not doing anything to provoke anyone. According to Bill Becker, who is an attorney representing the plaintiffs uh, with the Freedom X Law, uh, this is what he told the student newspaper. The problem was created by campus administration, the UC Police Department, and Berkeley Police Department not doing their job to protect the public. I wonder if they're going to find out that the Supreme Court ruled that they don't really have to protect you. They're just there for cleanup job and draw little chalk outlines around people and put tape up all over the place. The lawsuit names University of California President Janet Napolitano, the UC Board of Regents, UC Police, De um, Police Department Chief of Police, the City of Berkeley, and Berkeley Police Department as defendants. It also names the current Berkeley Chancellor, Carol Christ, or Christ, and Nicholas Dirks, who was the chancellor at the time of the riots. Antifa protesters setting the campus ablaze was one of the first instances of the group's violence last year. Yes, these are, these are people that, yeah, they have your best interests at heart. Stop and think about that. These are the same people that say that they have your best interests at heart. They say, just like the government says, we're doing it for you to protect you from yourself. Antifa is going to protect you from yourself because you had a critical thinking moment there and they've got to beat it out of you, apparently. Um, outbreaks of violence against conservative speakers plagued UC Berkeley throughout 2017, culminating in September when the college paid a total of 1.4 million to ensure safety at a Ben Shapiro event and another Yiannopoulos event, which I do like Ben Shapiro. He talks entirely too fast for me, but I have to listen to him a couple of times to get everything he says because, you know, one of them, they're fast talkers. But he does raise some very valid points, so I like him. In any case, the university paid for equipment rentals as well as hourly fees, overtime pay, and travel and room and board for officers who came to Berkeley from other cities. Police erected concrete barriers and created a protective barrier around five buildings for Shapiro's event. The heavy police presence dissuaded further violence. See, sometimes I think you need to have someone else standing up and going, uh-uh, ain't gonna happen. 
Also, Shapiro praised the college for putting up the security costs, but blasted the fact that hundreds of police officers were necessary in the first place, calling Antifa pathetic, lying, stupid jackasses, which, yeah, yeah. They are petulant children that are on a permanent temper tantrum. That's the way I look at them. Woody! Cooper, the moon landing did not happen. And, you know, they couldn't do that again anyway because, well, they they lost. You know, they lost the technology and just can't get it back now. It would be way too expensive to to try and get it back. So... Yeah, really? As if you guys don't piddle away enough money the way it is? You know, NASA, never a straight answer, is a department of the industrial, military industrial complex, don't you know? So, yeah, wonderful little trolleys. Although, they do have some really pretty street art painting of, you know, galaxies and nebulas and all this other way cool stuff. I, there was a picture I saw over on Mines, and I swear to God, I saw some, a YouTube video of those street artists with the tin cans, you know, with the, the paint cans and the coffee cans and, and cottage cheese containers and lids and that kind of shit and rolled up newspaper. I've seen, I swear, I saw someone do that very picture and I'll bet you NASA bought it. And then said, Oh, we've got to we've got to do a little off centering here and a little bit of this and a little bit of that because we gotta make it look like it was put together from different segments. Yeah, it's CGI, peeps. CGI. None of that. None of it is with the naked eye. Or even with a telescope. Sorry. They're blowing smoke up your backside and that smoke is toxic. So, which by the way, I heard the other day, you know, you don't fart. I did not realize this. People do not fart. They giggle out their asshole. So that is my, that is my new, my new thing. I no longer fart. I'm just giggling from both ends. <laughs> there you go. There's my rocket fuel for the day. So, um, let's see. Let's get that posted and put it over on the effing site. Okay. What's going on over here? Oh, Stanley Kubrick made an admission and possibly died for his role. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. I shared a, a video link of a talk from a gentleman that was... Um, in the intelligence department of the Royal Canadian uh, Naval Police or something like that, um, back in, he gave that talk in um, 1958, I believe, and a year later he was dead. Go figure. It's a very interesting talk about Illuminati and Masons and... Um, all kind of, and you know the Rothschilds and all that other fun stuff and and how you know the way he laid the cards out on the table it's like most of these groups are useful useful idiots but I did learn something one thing in that video he said that everybody thinks that Goyim is you know for us as Christians or Gentiles or whatever no Goyim means um, cattle he said, that's the actual translation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really, Grim? Well, you know, I have had a few um, intestinal giggles that were more of a <laughs> kind of thing. But <laughs> go figure. Oh, well, I have just been listening to all kinds of videos and videos don't really do what I I'm not set up to do videos on here. Sorry. And shitty internet. Has it, I, that's one thing I want to ask. Has anybody else's internet gone totally to shit in the last couple of weeks? Mine has. 
not just here at the house, but also in town at work. A lot of people are complaining that the internet has gone totally to shit. Things are slower. Um, you know, and it's, I'm, I wonder if maybe somebody is not pulling some strings, governing things down, although I don't really understand that whole concept of how do you govern down stuff that travels through the air. But in any case, um, it's got to be the receiver, you know, on the receiving end that they have governored down, however that works. But um, I wonder if that's going on so that they're trying to pressure us to complain so that we will get that whole net neutrality thing going back again or whatever. I didn't really understand what all net neutrality was either, but there's a lot of things in this world that I just plain don't understand and I really don't care to understand. They're just, they just don't pique my interest enough to want to go there and actually research it. Not like some of the other stuff that I have been checking out of late. Michigan Bakery to debut Flamin' Hot Cheeto Donut. Gross! That's gross, Grim. Ew. Foy. I would not. No. Okay, I got a notification over here. Let me see what's going on. Hi, Aidens! I see you over here on Mines and Chuck O'Chelly. Hi, Chuck O'Chelly. Anybody check out the Frank Zappa videos I shared? Thank you, Grimmy. I'm you know, it's one of those misery loves company kind of things. I hate to hear that someone else I'm hoping you know, I hope it's just a localized thing, but when you hear other parts of the country are having issues as well, it's like somebody's fucking with the switches again. Somebody's pushing buttons. Somebody with the government obviously pushed the wrong button. You know, kind of like that whole thing with Hawaii, which really has my sister, just younger than me, very, very, very pissed off because her hubby works in Hawaii. And uh, he works there 45 days, and then he comes back to Kansas for 45 days. And back to, he had just gone back to Hawaii a couple days prior to that warning thing. And, oh, she was, she was freaking. As, you know, I can understand that. But it's like, you son of a bitches. And then they go, oops, pushed the wrong button. And I, I did see one thing where, you know, you could see the screen and how, yeah, okay. I'm not saying that I've never done that, because I am the queen of button pushers. Just saying. But, seriously, no. Besides the fact that, um, don't they have more of a fail-safe than just one person is allowed to do the button pushing? You know, doesn't it take more than one person? Don't you have to have, you know, like a kind of criteria that you have to follow or a procedure? No, I don't think so. I think that was an intentional. I think it was definitely a test to test people's reactions to see how much, how many people they could get terrified or in a dither or whatever. It freaking pissed me off. And then it was like, assholios. You total asshole. And then what? A couple days later, had one over in Japan. Really? And you know, just coincidentally, the day before that happened, an NBC News crew was there to tour the facility. And someone just happened to say something about, well, you know, what if like such and such scenario were to happen? And then the next day, it happens. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, all the world's a stage. And I think they are playing it to the hilt. And I also think the reason they're playing it to the hilt is because they know they are in their death throes. And who do I mean by they? The assholios that have been pulling the strings are losing... Um, Took them 38 minutes to say they pressed the wrong button. Oh, thanks, Goober. Yeah, 38 minutes. That's a long time to make people um, stew and fret and panic. And and I think they really wanted to see that. You know, it's 
it's it's bullshit it's bullshit and you know I really honestly think all of that negative energy the fear and the anger and the anguish and all all of that fun stuff they feed off of that and if they don't feed off of it then at least it going off on a where's my tinfoil hat I think that energy actually fee, feeds you know and changes the structure of whatever that whatever is encasing our home we'll just leave it I'm not gonna say globe because I mm, you hear them change their story all the time and there's not a single fucking picture out there that shows it's a globe there's not a single one out there everything is goddamn CGI or or with that fisheye lens kind of shit so especially with what was that guy that that supposedly um, did the uh, parachuting from way up in the upper atmosphere yes the external cameras showed a curvature yes they did but the camera behind him inside the cabin before he jumped out that one showed flat the external one showed curve the internal one shooting over his shoulder out into the horizon showed flat horizon go figure what the hell's going on I don't know I don't know the shape of things all I know is they're lying and there's a reason for it and I want to know the reason that's my thing why the hell you assholes lying to us what you what are you gaining from this which is what makes me think that this whole Van Allen radiation belt thing that engulfs our world depending on the temperament of the people that reside here in this lovely little persistent illusion that we call reality those of us that reside here if you have more positive energy flowing up more happy people expressing happiness and positive things then it changes the structure of that radiation belt but if you keep the terror going if you keep the fear going if you keep the anger going if you keep the divisiveness going that also changes the molecular structure of that so it becomes either a prison planet or a Garden of Eden depending on the molecular structure of our shielding that's just I'm putting that out there there's my little tinfoil hat for you and yes Grammy I do like the flat Sun theory and the flat moon I also think the moon is somewhat um, transparent because there have been a few times when I've looked at the moon and I thought no isn't that supposed to be the crescent why do I see a star there of course I don't have fancy schmancy cameras or any of that fun shit so I just see it and then I tell someone else and they go you better take that tinfoil hat off it's starting to squeeze your brains but I have seen you know when it's the crescent moon and seen a star within that crescent so what the hell what's going on is it just this really persistent illu illusion of reality that we got going on I don't know organized religion yes goober it's control it is control and that's another thing I think I really honestly think World War three is going on right now and it's a battle for your mind controlling your mind however and they will use tools uh, I don't I don't doubt that one bit they will use tools on the physical but yeah it's a battle for the mind to control the mind because if you control the mind if you control the mindset if you control the emotions then you control yes yes goober they do they feed off of the negativity I honestly believe that which is why I go out of my way to be happy even if something really crappy happens I try to bring myself up and try to be happy because if you if you put those happy vibes out there at least it makes my world better I don't know about yours but it makes mine a lot better so okay huh I am really going off on weirdness tangents tonight how fun is that I'm gonna go ahead and shut Twitter down cuz yeah 
shitty internet and all. Now, let's see. Pawns in the game. That was, uh, that's by William Guy um, Carey. And he's the individual of that, that video. I think Frumpy watched it or listened to it earlier today. And, uh, yeah, Pawns in the Game is one of the books that he wrote. And, yeah, yeah, I think I'm going to have to get that one. But before I go there, let's get off of some of this craziness stuff and go to something just a little bit more crazy, shall we? This is from irishcentral.com. Those crazy Irish people, you know, they they like their scotch. They like their whiskey. They, they're they weird. They're crazy. This is from um, a couple days ago. An Irish woman legally marries a 300-year-old ghost and says that the lovemaking is great. Wow. It was spooktacular, wasn't it? <laughs> There's some really weird, in, unusual individuals in this world. Thank you. <laughs> wow. You know, when when the source energy, whatever it was, that decided that, hey, I'm going to make this reality, and then I'm going to split myself up so I can experience all of this stuff, and then reincorporate back into myself, and so I will, I will be omnipotent, omnipotent and omniscient. Yeah. Uh, this is, this is a good one. I'm proud of you, because I would have never thought of creating a little bit of reality experiencing energy that would apparently the ghost of a Haitian pirate proposed marriage to a county Louth woman after she told the spirit she was no longer content with casual sex <laughs> okay this 45 year old woman married the ghost of an 18th century Haitian pirate after the couple met when she felt his presence laying beside her in bed in 2014. Amanda Teague from Droghade, Droghade, I know, I did, okay, Amanda Teague from Ireland, that works. She traveled to international waters to marry her pirate partner, Jack, through the means of a medium after telling the spirit that she was no longer happy having to just have casual sex. Jack from Haiti. Really? Teague, who has five children from a previous marriage with a living man, believes that she has found her soulmate in Jack, who was executed over 300 years ago for theft at sea. She also works as a Pirates of the Caribbean Jack Sparrow impersonator and believes that it was the pirate link that brought her own Haitian pirate to her. She even claims the sex is better than with living men. Okay. Having built up their relationship since 2014, the great sex wasn't enough for Teague anymore. However, and she gave Jack an ultimatum that she would need more commitment for their relationship to continue. I told him that I wasn't really cool with having casual sex with a spirit and I wanted us to make a proper commitment to each other. If I'm going to be in a long-term relationship with somebody, I have the right to be married. And I want the big traditional wedding with the white dress. It was very important to me. <clears throat> Apparently marriage to a ghost is legal in some countries such as France and China. And so the couple traveled to international waters to ensure the legality of their marriage would be upheld when they returned to Ireland. Jack was represented by a skull and crossbones flag. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm having a really hard time keeping a straight face with this one. <laughs> sorry, okay, back to... <laughs> Uh, he was represented by a skull and crossbones flag while his specially designed wedding ring was placed on the candle as he could not physically present a hand on which it could be placed. 
He also gave his vows with the help of a medium while a shaman priest presided over the marriage. Obviously, I can't speak for him, but there has to be verbal consent from both people, Teague said. Wow. <laughs> wow. Apparently, I, if I gave consent on his behalf, it would put a question mark over the whole authenticity of the marriage. So we had an independent medium speak for Jack. The couple went on a honeymoon in Ireland before returning to Teague's current home in Downpatrick. She claims that the couple go on date nights to dinner and to a cinema, while he ensures she always gets a Christmas and birthday present by sending messages to one of her daughters about what he'd wish to buy, and they purchase it for him because, well, you know, there's not too many places that ca take ghostly exchange. Mm. Teague now wishes to spread more information about the possibilities of a relationship with a ghost, and she and Jack are co-writing a book named Ain't No Grave Can Hold My Body Back to advise singletons <laughs> on how they, too, can bag themselves a ghost partner. <laughs> Oh, God. Wow. <laughs> so would you consider... No. No. <laughs> you know, part of me just wants to laugh and say, Oh, wow, I would have never thought of something like that to, um, you know, to, as an attention-seeking thing. You know, I would have never thought of that. But then there's a part of me that thinks, okay, you got a shaman involved. You got a medium involved. You got this woman that's marrying a pirate flag. And it's like, okay. And he's sending messages to her daughters to tell them what he wants to buy her for Christmas and birthday. Okay. Now, I... I, I honestly believe that there are people in other realms of existence that can communicate with us. I don't think people that have exited this walking meat suit that we are occupying at, in this reality, I don't think just because they leave the meat suit that you can't talk to them anymore. I really do believe that you can talk to them. But I'm not, uh, mm, I'm not real sold on this whole, wow, that's just, Wow. <laughs> Darlin, wow. And I'm feeding the beast. I really am because I'm I'm sharing this. <laughs> I would have never huh. Oh, oh. <laughs> And yeah, Grimmy, um, yeah, that whole death till death do us part thing. Obviously, that no longer applies. <laughs> okay, Frumpy's half Irish. All right, Frumpy. <laughs> half Irish and Rob's half German and wow. Okay. Um. Oh, you won the lottery tonight, Frumpy? Sweet. That's awesome for you. Oh, I oh go, Goober, honey, I covered a story a couple months back of a woman marrying her, or no, did she marry it or did she just propose to her chandelier? I don't remember now. But she's in a relationship with her chandelier. <laughs> oh, people, wow. Well, uh, I'm thinking most of, we are getting limited on things that can be experienced in the quote unquote normal manner. And so now we're really reaching to uh, find experiences that are just really, really out there. Out there. Wow. Um. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, oh, the flat earth came from... Yes, it did. Yes, they do talk about that in the Bible. Oh, once again, another one of those books that uh, was written by a man that said that God told him. God spoke to me. Mm, I've used cell phones. <laughs> That's pretty much my argument right there. Okay. I've used cell phones. Okay. Mm so, let's see. Where else do I want to go? Um, okay. How about... I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna touch on this one first, just because I I, I have a few things I, I wish to say just about the headline. I I haven't read the article, but seen the headline and it was like really. This is from healthnutnews.com. Eight die of quote unquote flu in two weeks in Santa Barbara. Seven had their flu shot. How's that working out for you? I know that sounds like a really heartless thing to say because there are family members that are, you know, dealing with the loss of a loved one. And yet, how's that working out? Isn't that supposed to prevent that kind of shit? Oh, scientists were worried that this, um, worried this year that the flu season was going to be especially rough. And that's proving to be true. Even though the flu shot doesn't work particularly well this season either. It's about 10% effective. 10%! Wow. That sucks. Health officials still want you to get it. <clears throat> yeah, because, well, they are officials in the disease management business. And they need that income. Sadly... In the last two weeks, eight Santa Barbara County residents have died from the flu, and seven of them had had their flu shot, although all eight were 65 years of age or older. Yes, dear. Chloe! Um, so, um, Dr. Charity Dean, the public health czar for Santa Barbara County, is extremely worried Holy sheep dip, that was loud. Yeah, I was having problems with my mixer earlier today, and it just really did not want to let me turn down the volume on a couple of things. So, <clears throat> uh, she's extremely worried because she's not seen numbers like these in the last decade. The number of patients who are testing positive for the flu at local hospitals and health clinics is off the charts. Local emergency rooms are slammed reportedly experiencing a threefold increase in number of patients reporting flu-like symptoms. And here we thought those chemtrails were just like nanoparticles of aluminum and all kind of other nasty chemicals. What if they're spreading flu? What a wonderful way to disperse it. I mean, you don't have to get a lot of people sick. Just cover the whole area. You'll have a few that will be susceptible. They will get sick, and then they will spread it like wildfire. Apparently, emergency waiting room times have gotten much longer as a result of this. If you've got the flu, there really isn't a whole hell of a lot they can do for you. Go home, stay home, drink lots of fluids, eat some chicken soup, and don't expose yourself to anybody else. Ay. Oh, that's true, Grimmy. 90% ineffective is a better way of saying that. Yeah, I like that a lot better. Um, initially, doctors wondered whether numbers in Santa Barbara were higher because of pre-existing lung problems from the Thomas Fire. But now that the rest of California seems to be getting hit just as hard, that theory has been discarded. Huh. Didn't somebody say not too long ago that they were really chemtrailing the shit out of California? Huh. I'm connecting dots with my tinfoil hat and my crayons. This year's strain of flu 
H3N2 has been knocking people out hard. But you don't need a flu shot that's only 10% effective or 90% ineffective and comes with a host of potential problems. Instead, you need to take care of your body. She goes on to say, I'm not a doctor and not trying to tell you what to do, but get some sunlight, taking vitamin D, drink plenty of water, manage your stress levels, eat plenty of whole foods, vitamin C, vitamin E, eat foods that are high in immune boosting properties. People, 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 you do not need to get a shot. If you're going to get a shot, get a shot of whiskey and then go to bed. Lord, get your damn vaccine. No, thank you. I don't want it. No, thanks. I know, Goob, they really want to reduce the population. You know, that's part, that's why die is in the word diet. You know, when you go on a diet, you're trying to reduce in areas. Maybe they're putting Mother Nature or Mother Gaia on a diet and they're trying to reduce some of this excess on the planet. They call it excess. I call it plethora. We have a plethora of different perspectives. Yet they think it's an excess. That's what they get for having an independent thought. Aye. So, okay. Thanks, Grimmy. I'm using your 90% ineffective over on mines. So, and we'll put this over on the effing site as well. Hi, TD. I see you over here, honey. Ah, sweet. She's sharing all kinds of way cool stuff. My daughter is going to go and do the polar plunge here in a couple of weeks. Her and her daughter. They're going to do a 1K run and polar plunge. It's like, oh, sure, get yourself all hot and sweaty and then jump in really cold water. <laughs> Better you than me. <laughs> I'm, I'm a wuss. Sorry. Not going to go there. Okay. Yeah, we're going to do this one. And then where's the, where's the little, where's the little guy that says, fuck you? <laughs> I gotta scroll and find the little fuck you meme or emoticon guy here on um, the effing site. Dun 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 dun. I know it's here, Grim, because I remember seeing it. But I'm, I'm scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Yeah, stay away from the pricks. There it is. There it is. Yes, found it. Okay, now that we have done that one, stay away from the flu shots. There's all kind of nasty stuff in there. You don't want to go there. Now, um, was it last week that I was talking about um, the whole cannabis thing? That was basically because the UN had put cannabis on the dangerous drugs list. Well... This is from Operation Recovery, OperationCleanRecovery.com from uh, a couple days ago. American media silence over UN calls for decriminalizing drug use worldwide. Drug use. Let's see if it's drugs in general. So one year after ignorantly dumbing down or doubling down on the drug war, the UN is now calling to end prohibition. The drug war is crumbling. This is by Justin Gardner from the Free Thought Project. But it's posted over here on Operation Clean Recovery. So a little notice public statement issued by the United Nations last week contains a dramatic shift in thinking on the issue of 
illicit substance use. After recommend, or recommitting to the failed idea of prohibition last year, the UN is now calling for the worldwide decriminalization of drug use and possession. Huh, so use and possession. And yet, they don't say nothing about growing or distribution. At least not in that sentence. The statement put out by the World Health Organization as the U.S. is in the midst of another political debate over health care calls for ending, decriminal or ending discrimination in health care settings. Okay, I agree with that. End the discrimination. Allow people to choose their choice or their type of treatment. It's up to them, not you. The WHO calls on states to end discrimination against marginalized and stigmatized populations Ah, in a variety of ways, and it includes a blunt and rather shocking statement on the drug war. So, apparently, we, the signatory United Nations entities, call upon the stakeholders to join us in committing to taking targeted, coordinated, time-bound, multi-sectoral actions in the following years, supporting states to put in place guarantees against discrimination in law policies and regulations by reviewing and repealing punitive laws that have been proven to have negative health outcomes and that counter established public health evidence. These include laws that criminalize or otherwise prohibit drug use or possession of drugs for personal use. Huh. This is an admission that the problem of drug abuse is a public health issue, not a criminal justice issue. Locking people in cages for the victimless behavior of ingesting substances arbitrarily deemed illegal by the state does nothing to reduce drug use or supply, as evidenced by the utter failure of the war on drugs, failure in what they told us, but not necessarily failure because who is winning in this war on drugs? Those that are pocketing. Follow the money. Prohibition has been denied people and uh, or has been denying people the miraculous healing powers of cannabis. For decades, medical research of cannabis was stifled by a drug war born on racism and political suppression. Oh, this is why they're coming out with it, because it's born on racism and political suppression. Although, yes, they did change the, the name here in the United States or started calling it marijuana here in the United States because them dirty Mexicans were smoking it, which is, it's not racism, it's culturalism because we're a freaking human race. There are no distinct races. We are all humans. There are cultural differences. There are ethnic differences. There may be some differences in DNA, but it is not just specific to one. I mean, there, it's across the board with that stuff. You are always going to find someone in each little, each little subsection, if you will, that's going to have the same tendencies as others. Things may be more predominant in one subsection than another, but in any case, back to this. Research has increased exponentially in recent years as governments around the world take steps to decriminalize this medicinal plant, notably among states in the U.S. Now, they're calling it a medicinal plant, and yet the FDA still wants to keep it on as a schedule one but they did approve a big pharma company who has patented a uh, synthetic version I don't want synthetic I don't trust those bastards give me natural or leave me the hell alone I don't want none of it if I can't have the natural I don't want none of it with this awakening has come amazing stories of healing through cannabis 
such as stopping seizures in children with debilitating epilepsy, treating post-traumatic stress disorder in veterans where all other treatments have failed, and healing a host of other illnesses without the dangerous side effects of pharmaceutical drugs. In terms of health care, prohibition is truly discriminatory, and the drug war only degrades public health. Portugal decriminalized all drugs in 2001, and it has been a resounding success. Drug usage rates, addiction rates, overdose deaths, and sexually transmitted diseases have all declined. The uh, WHO statement also notable because it contradicts the UN's reaffirmed support of prohibition during the 2016 special session on drugs which to me, once again, this means that they know their house of cards is tumbling down and they are doing some, a little bit of CYA, cover your ass, because they really don't want to be tarred and feathered. The special session was the first to be held in almost two decades and many were expecting a softened approach from the failed war on drugs. Despite the pleas of countries like Mexico suffering from horrendous black market drug violence to move beyond prohibition, a prohibition framework remained in place. In the UN's 1998 special session on drugs, the world body agreed to work toward a drug-free world. <clears throat> the sheer lunacy of this position is blatantly obvious now more than ever. Despite decades of prohibition and trillions of dollars spent, drugs remain easily accessible. And you're not going to have a drug-free world if you keep propping up Big Pharma. Talk about drug pushers. The WHO statement comes at a time when the U.S. drug war is at a pivotal moment. More and more U.S. states are decriminalizing cannabis at both the medicinal and recreational level putting themselves at odds with the ongoing federal prohibition of cannabis as a Schedule I nar narcotic, which it is not. The U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions, oh, Mr. Talk About a Wackadoodle, is a well-known rabid prohibitionist. How well did that work out with the alcohol thing, by the way, Jeffrey? Jeffrey, Jeffrey, Jeffrey. And is he is taking steps to ramp up the drug war. Someone needs to bitch slap him down. Trumples, if you're going to do anything worth a shit, bitch slap him down, would you please? Um, he's calling for increased police measures and prison sentences, even though this approach is proven as a failure. Why? Because he's a fucking control freak. That's why. Crazy brains. Honey. Stop it. Stop it. Jeff, breathe. Breathe. Actually, try some. You know, probably is. He's probably a closet toker, and he just doesn't want anybody else. Or he wants to keep it this way because he's raking in some serious jack on the black market. That's another possibility. So... There is little hope that Sessions and other drug warriors around the world, such as the Philippines President Rodrigo, Rodrigo Dutierrez, um, who is now having the police forces murder drug users on the spot, dumbasses, with the explicit blessing of Trumples. Really? Did Trumples bless him for that? What a moron. Um, maybe they will pay any attention. Would they pay any attention to the WHO call for decriminalization? Probably not, because control freaks are going to be control freaks. Nevertheless, the WHO statement is an encouraging sign that the tide has turned against prohibition. As the drug war is dismantled piece by piece in Portugal, United States, Mexico, which recently legalized medicinal cannabis, and Canada, soon to legalize recreational cannabis, the wisdom of ending prohibition will become ever more obvious. And you know, I'm not real keen on the whole smoking part of it, but you know, the CBD oil, there, and it's not just the marijuana side. Hemp is also cannabis. 
and hemp would be ever so beneficial in a multitude of areas but you can't grow it because it's cannabis the hell so lift the restriction get rid of that just leave it alone it's a plant for Christ's sake you don't have hemlock criminalized do you there's an awful lot of flowering plants out there that it's not illegal to grow or have and yet this one is what the hell y'all are nuts okay and I'm going to be doing some more research on the CBD oil and some of those other things because I I I got an oil that's supposed to be pretty high in cannabinoids, um, but it is not. Um, it's not marijuana based. It's another plant, and I I, I can't remember now. I'll have to look it up. Um, closely related, but not marijuana based and uh, I need to check out the properties of that bad boy just because I'm gonna be doing some blending <laughs> so wow okay oh yeah I did start about 20 minutes late so I got I was thinking god I only got 20 minutes left I started 20 minutes late so huh, go figure okay I'm gonna reshare this one just because I really like it over here on mines. Okay. So, now that I've done that one, let me go check out. Um. This is from Minds.com. It's a blog. And I just saw the headline of it and I thought, ah, ah, let's check this bad boy out, shall we? And I didn't get a chance to even read a little bit of it. Um, but this cognitive science professor proves that reality is an illusion. So here's the truth. Are you ready? Can you handle the truth? Apparently this was originally written April 26th of 2016. This, the idea is simple yet almost unfathomable. Everything in reality we see is just what our brains are programmed to interpret reality as. The computer or phone screen that you're looking at right now only appears and feels the way it does because that is the best way for our brains to understand what it actually is. Are you confused? Well, Professor Donald Hoffman of the University of California, Irvine, offers to help or offers a helpful metaphor for wrapping your head around the concept. Imagine a folder on the desktop of your computer. In that folder, you know there are files. But you know that folder itself is not the files. It is simply a visual representation of where and what the files are. So, in that same sense, he suggests that every object that we see is simply a represent representation of true reality, just like the folder. So, he gives a wonderful talk on TED. And I'm going to go ahead and share this for you. I've been listening to some TED Talks of late again. Oh, there went Miss Dorky Lynn. Yeah, there's all kind of deadly shit out there, Grimmy, that you can buy that, yeah, you can buy that stuff, but well, alcohol, hell, or cigarettes. Oh, yeah, they want you buying cigarettes, by gosh and by golly. You go ahead and you buy those cigarettes because we want that tax revenue. But don't you dare use them. Yeah. 
It's a crazy, crazy world that we live in. Okay. Because they want, and that's that's another reason why I think we just need to do away with the monetary system. Period. Douche. Get rid of it. You know, um, I was reading something over on Minds the other day about some atrocities that have gone on through the centuries, and the the perpetrators have been able to get away with it because they greased magistrates' palms with gold you know, murdering children and shit like that. But if you grease the magistrate's palms, well, then, you know, the magistrate will make it go away. You know, so long as you have plenty of gold. Well, let's get rid of all the shiny baubles, okay? Let's get rid of this whole monetary system. And just everybody start being responsible for their words and deeds and learn how to grow their own food. I don't mean that you have to have a cow and a chicken and a pig and a horse and all this other fun shit. But you know, everybody learning to, I'm very good at, at growing this, you're very good at growing that, how about we work out a trade? Whenever you need whatever this is, I will trade you for whatever that is and vice versa. You don't need any kind of monetary exchange then. Seriously, I think we have, you know, everybody keeps calling. I keep seeing all this shit about calling for a revolution and we need to have a second American revolution. No, no. You do know what a revolution is, don't you? There's two definitions for that. You can have a revolution which is an armed revolt or an armed uprising or... You can have a revolution like a revolution around the sun. Which one do you want to have? Because one of them is a bloody mess and the other one you start out at one point and you go all the way around and you come right back where you started. And every time there is a revolution that goes on, every single time, it may take a while, but you wind up ending up back where you started where you got a bunch of tyrants that are making everybody miserable, you got control freaks running the show, all kind of craziness, and you haven't solved anything. As a matter of fact, you've muddied the waters a little bit more and made things a little bit worse. But you went around in circles. Wow, wasn't that wonderful? Stop that. My computer's making a weird noise. It's old. <laughs> Please don't douche on me yet. In any case, instead of having a revolution, how about you have an evolution? Evolve past some of this nonsense. Get the R out of there. If you want to have some R, be a pirate. There's a gal over in Ireland that's ready to marry you. <laughs> if you want to have some R, get you some ale. Or some beer, or some rum, or something like that. Get it out of that word. Have an evolution. Evolve past all of this bullshit. We don't need it. I mean, I know they will tell you, you have to have this because there are certain things that they're scarce. No, they're not. They're manufactured scarcities. How much food gets thrown away so that they can say... Oh, well, you know, it was a bad crop in such and such place. Doesn't make a shit and bit of difference that there's 20 other places that grow that same thing and they had bumper crops. You say there was a bad crop here, so everybody else, in order to support your narrative, and that happens a lot. Do some research, you'll find out. It happens a lot. Step beyond that shit. Stop playing that game. This, this whole control shit has got to go. And the first way to make it go is to stop thinking that you can control everybody else. And here I am telling you, you need to stop doing this shit. Well, you know, for your own good, that would be the best way to handle it. Stop trying to control everybody else. Worry about yourself. Take care of your own self. I do it myself. Fix your own problems. Ah. Oh.
Oh, it was my fan. Okay. I don't know if you guys could hear that, but I had a whoo going on over here. So, okay, food trends of 2018. This popped up in my pocket. I got to see what the heck this is. It's from J.P. Morgan Chase & Co. Foods of the future. Seven trends to watch in 2018. Huh. Comfort foods, communal dining, making a comeback. Yeah. Especially homemade things where you actually know where the ingredients came from. Yeah, because all that nasty shit and fast food. Oof. Huh. Every food fad has its day. And as we get closer to the new year, of course, this was written or originally posted the 11th of December of last year, and it was updated the 10th of January. Dun, dun, dun. I just got a text from somebody. Dun, dun, dun. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> In any case. In the past, we've seen everything from artesian pizzas to cronuts to boozy milkshakes, ill. But 2018 will depart from the flaky and frothy and veer toward both a wellness and comfort-focused food experience. Booyah! So grab a fork and get ready as we dive into the top seven food ingredient and dining trends of 2018. Plant-based protein. Come 2018, a hearty steak will no longer be your primary source of protein. Well, I'm not that keen on steak anyway. Once in a while, I get a hankering, but whatever. Vegetables will take center stage as more people learn that plant-based proteins like chickpeas, broccoli, rabi, broccoli, rabi, okay, portobello mushrooms are healthier options for themselves and the environment. I think the plant forward trend is going to be more important in 2018 because people are understanding that less animal protein is better for their health and the environment. This is from nutritionist Elizabeth Fosberg. According to the culinary entertainment agency freelance cookbook editor Rebecca Merritt, vegetables will also take the place of pastas and other carb heavy snacks. I think we're getting away from using a lot of these old-school flour-based products and getting more creative. It's not going to be all meat, and you're not going to have wings and pulled pork. You're going to have cauliflower wings, which I don't know that I'm, if I would go that far. Maybe in the big cities, but not out here. Farm-to-table menus. Booyah! That's what I'm talking about. We're moving toward a higher consciousness about where our food actually comes from and how it's made or raised. Labels matter more now more than ever because we aren't going to buy just anything. We want to know if our meal is farm to table, especially when it comes to meats and hormones. Merritt agrees, saying farm to table became a hot label. Consumers are now interested in what they are they are eating, which is tremendous. They raise the bar and hold people accountable. I think restaurants are going to be more creative with what they have seasonally because customers are going to be like, hey, excuse me, this is not artichoke season. Yeah, I got some apples a couple of weeks ago that I think they were picked way too soon because they just, they looked ripe, but they sure didn't taste it. Gut healthy food. Mm -hmm. If your gut ain't healthy, the rest of your body will soon follow. Research shows gut health is directly linked to overall brain function, including improved mental health and a decrease in diseases like cancer and Alzheimer's and the food industry is taking notice. According to Fosberg, there will be an increased interest in repurposing fermented foods like kimchi, sauerkraut, and drinks like kombucha, as well as cultured foods like yogurt with probiotics, don't, no, yogurt, make your own yogurt, and foods with prebiotics like gum arabica, or arabic, Okay, 
chicory root, and Jerusalem artichokes, all of which promote gut health. Hmm. Not crazy about artichokes either. I'm picky. So, Arctic cuisine. How about a cool blast of Arctic cuisine? Dishes from the North and South Poles, especially Scandinavia. Align with our new uh, newfound interest in plant proteins, gut health, and seasonal cooking. Seafood is overall healthier than meat. So the Arctic trend is still going strong, says Susie Bararako, who is president of Food Trend Forecasting Think Tank Culinary Tides. There will be an interest in the fermented fish and pickles from the region, she says, which is not only part of the gut health trend, but an interest in extreme flavors that come with time of economic recovery. When people are feeling confident, they're going to try something more unusual. A spike in the Arctic food trend is also due to an interest in local and sustainable cooking, and Badarako says that the philosophy will begin to drive a lot of American cooking. Communal table dining. Oh my God, there is a restaurant down in um, Yoder, Kansas. It's down by Wichita called the Country Kitchen. I think that's, it's been a while since I've been there. O-M-G. When you go in there, and order a family meal. Talk about, yeah, your Olive Garden with your never-ending pasta bowl. Oh, go away. You ain't got nothing on this place. Because if it, whether you order the fried chicken, or you order the roast beef, or you order whatever their uh, family meal thing is, you get mashed potatoes, you get two veggies, you get a salad, you get bread, and when you run out of something, they come over and they refill it, and it's all it's an all-inclusive price. And then you also get dessert at the end as well. It's like, holy mackinoli, if you leave that place hungry, it's your own damn fault. I love that place. I need to go back there, and but I need to find a lot of other people to go with me. <laughs> uh, so... The communal table dining. Communal tables not only allow restaurants to maximize their square footage, they also offer a unique opportunity to interact with strangers. And according to Bararaco, they're poised to make a comeback in 2018, and yet they closed the Golden Corral in Hayes. Talk about communal dining. Yeah, they put a, they're putting a Chicago pizza or Chicago something or other in the Golden Corral. It's like wait a minute, whenever mom cooked, that's where we went. <laughs> Shit. So, you're going out with friends because you don't trust anyone, or maybe you don't want to be alone. And you go out, but you're still kind of hopeful, so you sit in a communal dining table with your best friend and are fine with meeting new people. The people who are feeling a lot of fear also sit at the communal table because they think it's hilarious to meet new people. Really? Feeling fear? They th Wow, that's a weird way to look at it. Of course, you can hopefully commiserate depending on who's sitting at the table with you, but if you were sitting around my family, we would all give you all kind of shit to where you would either leave or you would start laughing with us because we would tell you, oh, come on, seriously? It was frickin' 60-some degrees below zero Celsius in Siberia. You ain't got it so bad. Okay, the next one is cowboy cooking. If you can set it on fire, I recommend it. Wee-hoo! Fire. Fire. <laughs> At least when it comes to food, anyway. Charring, smoking, live fire, and clinching. What... Bararaco calls cowboy cooking all come from a time of economic recovery. It's more exciting and also produces flavors that are far more extreme on the palate. We create or we crave flavors like char and citrus when we're looking to experiment and feel good about making changes. So try a chili lime charred steak or Japanese 
yakitori, whatever the heck that is, which is a type of, oh, here, this it's a type of skewered chicken. And if you're interested in feel, um, feeling out the trend, oh, they have pictures. Mmm. Comfort food and dessert. I made dessert last night, actually with those apples. I s sliced them really, 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 really thin and then put them in a pot or in a baking pan with a little bit of coconut oil to hopefully keep them from sticking too bad and um, did some, it's not sugar, what's that, what's that um, natural sugar alternative? Gosh darn it, I can't think of the name of it now. I put some of that on it and a lot of cinnamon and then I put some craisins in there and put foil over the top and baked on a low and oh my god. When I opened the oven door and pulled up the foil, I think I gained five pounds just smelling it. <laughs> oh, seven. Wow. In any case, back to the comfort food. So, while we're very interested in health and wellness heading into 2018, there's also a callback to some good old American cooking, especially the kind that comes out of the Appalachian and Ozark regions. regions. That means cornbread, hush puppies, moonshine, regular barbecue, acorn flour, blackberries, and more. Ah, oh, milo flour, amaranth flour. Um, yeah, acorn flour would be good. Um, rice flour. You know, use some different things. Because, you know, and, and I've got friends that are very, very, um, have corn issues. And so... Um, trying to stay away from corn it's in freaking everything so you basically have to make it from scratch at home so I'm learning all kinds of fun things to do at home and uh, yeah I'm my pants are getting tighter <laughs> just saying oh well it goes on to say, and while we have an interest in our American roots, we're also interested in the roots of others, especially when it comes to dessert. National comfort desserts are becoming the order of the day, with an emphasis on desserts of national importance across the seas, like eclairs in France or shaved ice concoctions from the Philippines called halo halo. Hmm. Everybody in the uh, respective country knows that dessert, or knows that dessert, but it's brand new to us. It's kind of sexy, but super approachable, because there's nothing odd about it. O okay. Cool. So, that was interesting. And yeah, I'm going to do uh, some flour tortillas. By the way, thanks for that recipe, Grim. Um, I'm going to roll that apple and, and craisin bake in flour tortillas and put a little butter on and sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon on top and then bake it to where the shell kind of stays in place. Just five, ten minutes maybe. And then munch down, chow down. So yeah, yummy, yummy, good for the tummy stuff. No, not aspartame, Frumpy. No aspartame. Um, it's not stevia. God, maybe it is stevia. I don't know. It might be stevia. Yeah. Ooh, Rob Work shared a cool one. Cool. Thank you, Rob Works. I am, by the way, going over a little bit from my regularly scheduled 8 o'clock because, um... I started late because I was on the phone <laughs> with my daughter. So, or one of my daughters. Thank you, Rob Works. Oh, and we got thank you, Larry Woods, as well. Uh, got an awesome book, um, Lost Ways, The Lost Ways. Wow. Really cool recipes in there. And, um, and ways to make a, a smoker and all kinds of other cool stuff. I mean, it's, yeah, it's pretty freaking awesome. Um, let me share this. 
over here real quick. Share the... Oop. Oh. Okay. Okay. I clicked on the wrong thing first. Oops. Um... Just a second here. I'm I'm trying to share two things at once now because <laughs> I clicked on one and wasn't quite ready to. Yeah. Okay. So what was that? Yes. Hates having. Oh, that's true, Frumpy. I hate having my pay docked. <laughs> Actually, you know, I'm I I need to do the well it's not it's never really a two hour, but yeah. Um in any case, I'm gonna go to this one that Rob Work shared. Off the grid news. Seven heal anything medicinal plants you can grow indoors. So Saint John's Wort. Ah cool. This plant will grow year-round with a grow light in the morning or evening to extend the growing hours of the day. Um, if you find that it's not flowering, then it may need longer hours of light. Cool. So the benefits of it, it may be as effective as some prescription medication for treating depression. It helps alleviate the symptoms of PMS and menopause and may help with the symptoms of ADD or attention deficit disorder. Cool. Time, which, yeah, my youngest daughter just moved into a new to her house, and I'm going, I still am. I'm going to make her some little um, herb pots because her hubby um, used to have that before they, before they moved in together and then got married and yada, yada, yada. He, he had his herbs up in the kitchen windowsill. So I'm going to do her some herb pots. And even if she doesn't use them, he will because he likes to cook as well. So uh, the benefits of time is that <laughs> I just don't have enough. Uh, time has been shown to aid in the relief of chest and respiratory problems, including coughs, bronchitis, and chest congestion. It's also been shown to have strong antimicrobial activity, neutralizing such bacteria and fungus, fungi as Staphylococcus aureolus or aureus and uh, Bacillus. Yeah, and and that and and that, <laughs> whatever the Latin. I did not take Latin in school. Is it obvious? Sage. It is a genus name, uh, or the genus name is salvia, which means to heal. And I love sage. And I need to, yeah, I need to add that to my list of things that I want to I want to plant this year. Um, it may lessen the symptoms of Alzheimer's and has been shown to lower both blood glucose and cholesterol. And it smells wonderful. And if you want to do a cleansing ritual in your house, dried sage, yeah, smells wonderful. Uh, number four, parsley. Too many people don't think of parsley or they think of it as a garnish on their plate. But parsley is one of the best green foods around. Can help with bad breath, can help detoxify the brain of ammonia, thereby reducing the feelings of hangover and may be a potential anti-cancer agent and has been shown to be chemoprotective. Chemotherapy is bad juju. Bad, bad, bad. Okay. Now that I've put that, I've gotten that out of my system. <laughs> Not really, but... Uh. Number five, marigold. A truly unique and beautiful flowering medicinal, marigold will grow with... Only just a little bit of TLC needed, which, yes, I like marigolds myself. The flowers have long been touted to possess near-legendary anti-inflammatory properties that have, shown to, have been shown to fight eczema and allergic reactions, relieves pain of arthritis, and can be made into tinctures and ointments that have shown, been shown to soothe rashes, bed sores, diaper rash, sunburns, and other types of burns. Lavender, which yes, lavender is a is a must have for anybody. 
Um, it is a very, very versatile plant and essential oil. Put lavender in your pillow to have a restful sleep and avoid insomnia, which that sometimes that works for people, sometimes it doesn't. I know some people that lavender actually gives them more energy, so you know it's, these are not universals here, but eh. and it can help with nervousness, headaches, stomach, nerves, uh, restlessness, and stress. Echinacea, yes, is an immune system booster. Several studies show that echinacea, yeah, just right there, helps boost the immune system. Echinacea has shown to be very promising in treating most any kind of infection from sinusitis to vaginal yeast infections to ear infections. And it shows promise in treating colon cancer and athlete's foot. Wow, who'd have thunk colon cancer and athlete's foot would both be listed in the same line. Wow. You do realize that the only real true cancer out there is government, don't you? Government is a real cancer. It is a cancerous thing. And the belief therein, it's a cancerous thing. And all it does is destroy its host. That's us, by the way. So you need to step away from that. Step away from government and step away from the crap that they're pushing on you. That they've known for decades does nothing but poison you. May kill the initial one, but it'll cause more. You know, that's how they mince words. Oh, they we treated her for breast cancer, but she died five years later from lymphoma or from leukemia or from colon cancer or from, yeah, yeah. But she she's a survivor of this one. Assholes. Assholes. Okay. <sighs> this one... I got to There you go. We'll do that and we'll do that. Okay. Now, I think I'm going to go and check out the pig, see what happened this date in history, and then I think I'm going to get the heck out of here because I'm starting to get rumblies in the tumbly. Just saying. Um, pig oinks out a table pounding tantrum about stuff that bugs the crap out of him. Oh. Ooh. There is a rant fest on the main page of PIGazette.com. You might want to go over there and check that shit out. Word of the day is landslide. Any margin of victory, no matter how small, which elects a Democrat. When it elects a Republican, the moon bats have another term for it. Voter fraud. A related term is mandate. In their quotable quotes section, the government has no source of revenue except the taxes paid by the producers. To free itself for a while from the limits set by reality, the government initiates a credit con game on a scale which the private manipulator could not dream of. It borrows money from you today, which is to be repaid with money it will borrow from you tomorrow which is to be repaid with money it will borrow from you day after tomorrow, and so on and so on, etc. This is known as deficit financing. It is made possible by the fact that the government cuts the connection between goods and money. It issues paper money, which it uses as a claim check on actually existing goods. But that money is not backed by any goods. It is not backed by gold. It is backed by nothing. It is a promissory note issued to you in exchange for your goods to be paid by you in the form of taxes out of your future production. That's from Ayn Rand. And you know, I was thinking the other day in a Huey Lewis song, playing on the radio as I was driving home, working for a living. And I thought, why do you have to work for a living? Aren't you living right now? Why do you have to work for it? That, you know, and I, I'm, I'm going to follow that little path 
and possibly even write myself a little blog about it, but it just it just hit me weird as in why do we have to work for a living when we're already living, we're already experiencing life. Why do we have to work to earn a living? If you've already got it, why do you have to earn it? There's that whole monetary system again. It's infected every level, every culture in the modern world, their language. Earn it. Pay attention. Earn a living. Spend time. It's infected us, and we need to get over that infection. Now, for this date in history, the 17th of January, 1956, David Caruso's name is etched in the annals of medical history when he becomes the first baby to emerge from the womb wearing sunglasses. Ouch. I'm sorry, Mommy. This date in history, the 17th of January, 1972, part of Highway 51 in Memphis named Elvis Presley Boulevard. Al Gore issues press release revealing that he discovers Elvis, Elvis wrote all his, or he discovered Elvis, wrote all his songs, and did the singing for him. Because, well, Al Gore is just awesome. And finally, this date in history, the 17th of January, 1976. 115 years after Thomas Crapper patents his invention, American musical taste circles the bowl when Barry Manilow's I Write the Songs hits number one. Oh, now come on, I like Barry Manilow. And that, I like Barry Manilow. I actually saw him in concert, and he was a blast. He put on one hell of a show. And, uh, yeah, the jingles that he wrote, holy crap. Of course, now when I look back on it, it's like, you bastard, you wrote all those songs that got stuck in my head, and then my kids wanted to go, wanted me to go buy that shit. You dirty bastard. See, now, now I see why he's, okay, never mind. <laughs> oh, well. I think I have prattled on long enough. Thanks, y'all, for listening. This has been Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com, Channel 3, also on the RLM Spreaker Channel, and later on the RLM YouTube Channel, and on lots of other RLM -a -num -a -num -a -num places. I will be back Friday for the Freaker Friday edition of Grammy's Rocket Chair. But until then, y'all have an absolutely amazing rest of your wacka 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 doodle Wednesday. And please... Step away from having to earn your living. You're already living. Just do it. Just do it. Step away from the bullshit. Step away from the cancer that is government and monetary system. I know it's going to take a little bit of time. You can't do this shit overnight, but it can be done. It is in its destiny.